Hi and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. My name is Pete Swinney and today's subject is the ECU initial setup for the M130 GP Lite and in particular sensor setup and engine speed limits. Let's get into it. Alright so um, just covering off where we are here we're in our initial setup workbook and on worksheet number five sensors critical and probably even before we get here I might just show you where you actually at first point allocate uh, what sensor is allocated to which input so I'll switch to the live software to do that it's much easier so here we are uh, we're online here I've got a simulator connected to an ECU to allow us to make it look like we've got an engine connected so there's actually two places that you can allocate the resource for which sensor or output is attached to which particular uh, input or output of the ECU. The one I use the most is uh, tools, edit input, output resources. So here uh, you can just type the particular sensor. Let's go with exhaust temp. And here you'll see exhaust temperature bank one collector is allocated to AV8. Now maybe the wiring guy made a mistake and he actually allocated it to AV7 well I can flick it over to AV7 here alright and you'll see we have a red uh, bar turn up here and a little flag and both of those things indicate that we're going to have a full full engine reset um, to get this parameter to take effect All right, I'm going to flick it back to AV8 anyway and um, we'll go from there so all your input and output allocations are in this location so for example if I type um, one that's not pre-allocated so what else have we got uh, oil pressure that's also uh, oh no it's not pre-allocated oh no the, lo the switches the oil pressure sensor is pre-allocated and if you've seen our first webinar it explains how similar to the M84 that certain resources are already allocated in the software so they don't turn up here obviously alright so let's see what is here uh, we've got our fuel and ignitions our wheel speeds warning light um, engine map switch for changing uh, for different boost controls or different uh, mappings for ignition and things like that uh, fans, brake switches, that kind of thing, a boost limit switch for running different boost levels. Alright, so you simply, so if we've got that case boost limit switch, we can allocate a 9 position switch into an analog volt or an analog temp input here, for example. So you just click on that and that is the, it allocates it to that resource and then that actually turns all the input set up on at the same time. Alright, just also showing you while we're here how to see the ones that are pre-allocated. We go to help, firmware wiring. It's popped up on my other screen, we'll bring it over. Alright, so these are the ones that are pre-allocated. So our inlet, air temp, coolant temp, throttle position, manifold pressure, fuel pressure are all pre-allocated. Alright, the oil pressure was allocated on AV5. Alright, and you can see here as we actually change the input and output setup the wiring diagram here updates as we go okay so this is everything that's configured at the moment all right one of the other places you can do your setup here is across here on the second worksheet of the initial setup workbook here and here's just a straight out list of the things that you can allocate and just again the drop down of uh, which one you want to allocate it to. Alright so we still haven't reset the ECU so control S save and if the engine was running now it would probably stall if it was at idle. Alright it just goes on offline for a little second and that's a full reset. So we're going to be working with our sensors critical here. Uh, we can probably do this from this page here. Just go through the basics. We've got a calibrate panel set up for each individual sensor these are the critical sensors that you must have configured in order for the engine to run or run half pipe properly um, so we'll start with our throttle position so here we have our calibration and in most cases 
it's very rare to have a OE calibration for this style it's non drive by wire so it's almost always going to be manual your diagnostic high and lows there and this is a little bit different in the M1 compared to our gold boxes where instead of a throttle low and a throttle high we have uh, the throttle sensor offset so this means basically the offset from zero volts and our throttle sensor scale and what this means is this is the percentage that the throttle moves per volt measured all right and the process though to set this up is the same as uh, as in the earlier ECUs you simply have the throttle down at uh, or closed we've got our all our critical sensor information here plus the voltages from those sensors so I've got my simulator connected here and I can just move move the voltage here so I might uh, do it uh, rather than a negative calibration I'll start with a low voltage here alright so that's uh, for example our throttle is now closed let me bring it all the way down right that's a typical number throttle position now closed and I'm highlighting there I'm going to press Q we've got a function here uh, that pops up in M1 quite a bit where we have a quick calibrate so what that means is if I press Q it enters the number so you can see here our voltage is now entered here and you can see we're going to reset but we won't do that yet I'm going to go to the scale so that means basically open the throttle right up so here we're going to open our throttle all the way up to something realistic here all right and once our throttles wide open we press Q and now we can see that what this means is the closed throttle is 0.786 of a volt away from zero ie its offset from zero is that and the high voltage reading has made it calculate back to be 34 percent of throttle opening per percent of per volt so it opens basically one third of its range per volt measured which isn't too bad so I'm going to press control s to save that and we'll go offline on the ECU for a sec and now our throttle is reading 100 because I've still got it stuck at 100 I'll close the throttle and we'll see it come back down to zero all right so now we can look at the uh, voltages that it's swinging and set our diagnostic lows and highs our diagnostic low is pretty good it's uh, about 0.2 uh, below so we, maybe we could make that 0.3 volts uh, so it's a little half a volt odd or 0.4 of a volt below our low voltage and then we want our diagnostic high to be you know around half a volt or more above the high voltage so if we open our throttle again uh, wrong way so we go up to a hundred and our high voltage is 3.3 .3 volts so somewhere around 3.8 volts we might want to rate maybe right right in the diagnostic high okay need to be a good hunk of voltage away from either end so we don't want the thing going into error all right control s to save all right I'll bring that throttle back down again okay so uh, next inlet manifold pressure all right so if you haven't got a manual calibration then your second option is to have a predefined calibration I'll stretch this over a little bit here so we have quite a lot of predefined calibrations for our sensors now we we list them by the sensor part number so what that means is that can be quite long so it's not based on the, the car the sensors in but the actual manufacturers part number so I click the drop down I can see here we've got quite a lot of pressure sensors but they've got to be absolute pressure sensors not every possible pressure sensor because this is a map sensor so this only lists pressure sensors that are um, that are read absolute so in other words uh, at, at sea level they'll read 100 kPa so just to uh, get some more help on that if you click on it and press F1 we can see the full list with some pinouts which is rather useful and uh, some other useful information that we were able to obtain at the time we did the calibration and so you can also uh, use control F 
to find a particular sensor if you if you like so I could type TI here and enter and everywhere there is TI it'll show up as yellow all right so TI this is the one I was looking for this is the TI sensor that we use quite a lot uh, the 75 PSI 75 AFN that's that one there all right gives you the MoTeC part number for this so you know it's the one if you've got MoTeC part number the pinout for it there's the actual number on the sensor so that's we want it that's the one we've got selected here 63 CP 75 AFN that's the 75 PSI absolute A stands for absolute all right so it's just a matter of selecting that if you get a configuration or a package and it's in there and you've got your own map sensor you simply go to manual all right and that just pops up uh, the diagnostics that you can now configure and you get a two-point table so if you've got your own sensor then obviously you've got a calibration to match otherwise how can you use it and to enter to calibrate that uh, or to enter the two voltages there they sh they sh most cases they should be 0.5 and 4.5 but if they're not uh, you can right click and go to uh, set up axis or a is the shortcut that's an easy one to remember and then you can simply type in your new number so it might be 0.45 and 4.7 Okay, so if they are two voltages that you have known calibrated pressures for, type those voltages in and then you can type in uh, the pressure themselves. Now the pressure, uh, you, may, you can either work out KPA, maybe you've got a PSI value and so one, you can jump on the internet and convert your PSI numbers into KPA because you can see this is in KPA here or you can actually change the um, change the the unit of this particular setup by going across to here right click active item see here's the inlet manifold pressure sensor translation table properties and we're going to make that PSI and now this is automatically see it's actually configured to a, it is a 75 PSI absolute pressure sensor all right so and you can see now that this has changed to PSI okay all right, so once you've done one, you, you know how to do the rest. So everything else is the same. So you're either on a manual calibration with manual diagnostics and uh, a translation table, which is effectively a calibration table, or you choose the MoTeC part number. So again, it is a little, little confusing here because you don't see the MoTeC part numbers here, but just whoops, click here, press F1, and you can hunt down if you type in the MoTeC part number then into the uh, control find which is still there I don't know a MoTeC part number off the top of my head for the Delphi is the uh, where is our one bear with me oh, it was a Delphi they're going to prove me wrong and not have the MoTeC part number it does look like that doesn't it I'm sure it's here oh there it is it's not in the 54002 so if that's out of sight and I type in 54002 there you go it's found the part number and it's that one there alright so it's 25037388 Okay, two five GM Delphi Denso. Okay, what mistake did I make there? F one. Oh, it's probably already. I oh know. F one. My apologies. One, two, six. Why did I, where did I get that number from? One, two, six, one, four, seven, one, seven. It's the one I'd chosen. All right. Uh, so there you go. That's how you choose your calibration. The same with coolant temperature. And that's it. So either manual or it's going to be a uh, 
in a lot of cases if it's a set up from scratch car it's the 026 uh, that's our standard Bosch water temp sensor all right and that's the only setup you need all right of course on the right hand side we've got all the all the sensors that you're configuring in their live values and the voltage is here for you to check on let's flip back to the presentation all right so we've covered that and we've covered that and we've covered that fuel pressure oh, that's good right so over on other sensors fuel pressure sensor is not a critical sensor but we would highly recommend you use it one of the reasons for that is that if your fuel pressure is, does fall or doesn't keep up with the boost then the M1 knows that if if it's configured it can measure the fuel pressure sensor and then automatically add the correct pulse width so that your you you don't lean out basically so even if you're not running closed loop and the fuel pressure falls because you run out of pump then the M1 just automatically knows how much the fuel pressure is down and how much longer to open the injector for to give you the correct lambda or the correct AFR right so when you are setting up a fuel pressure sensor same same rules as far as the sensor itself we have to you know put some sort of calibration in either preset or manual but what we want to do is tell the ECU a couple of really good bits of information one is the regulator just vented to atmosphere or is it attached to the inlet manifold all right so if it's attached to the inlet manifold what the ECU assumes is if it goes up by one bar of boost then the fuel pressure goes up by one bar now if the fuel pressure sensor is working that doesn't matter because it just measures and uses the fuel pressure uh, from the from the sensor itself however if the fuel pressure sensor goes into error connector falls off or you don't have a sensor then the M1 has to model what fuel pressure will be so the other piece of critical information you have to tell the M1 is what is the standard you know what is your um, static fuel pressure so with the engine running and no vacuum hose on if it's got a vacuum hose or with the fuel pump running and the engine not going what's the fuel pressure all right so while we're here I'll give you a, uh, another look at how to change this unit here because it's quite common for people you know half the people in the world use PSI and the other half um, KPA and then the rest use uh, bar and some use who knows what else um, so it's kind of nice to have the unit you're used to so anytime you want to change a unit in the M1 right click on the on the place where the unit is go to active items you'll see fuel pressure default and so this isn't the fuel pressure sensor unit this is just the unit that we use for fuel pressure default go into the properties and we can change it to KPA alright so now we have our uh, fuel pressure in KPA and we might want to say that with our key on fuel pump running engine not running we are three and a half bar or 350 KPA and this is a naturally aspirated engine and so it has no reference to the inlet manifold and so we're just going to say it's uh, ambient pressure referenced now if the fuel pressure sensor ever drops out it simply uh, in with this this setting here and that means the fuel pressure is not going up and down with the engine uh, with the inlet manifold then it simply just uses 350 kPa as the fuel pressure if you change this to here if the fuel pressure sensor drops out at uh, one bar of boost 100 kPa of boost it will assume that the fuel pressure is 450 kPa because it's assuming the regulator is going up at one to one with the inlet manifold pressure all right uh, reasonably straightforward all right so there's the oil pressure setup no, no problem exhaust temperature setup this setup is here because we have I uh, I see a mistake here I might as well correct that well and you can see that so here we've got a manual calibration for the exhaust temp sensor and there's nothing on the worksheet to calibrate it so this is one of my earlier versions of GP light so I'll show you how to actually add stuff to the worksheet so if we right click and go to properties you'll see that it 
by default we can't alter that but if we unlock the layout right click unlock we can go to properties here and we can add our exhaust temp bank one translation all right there it is there and now when we're in manual mode of course we need to have that translation for you to be able to fill that out all right in auto mode if it's one of the uh, standard calibration to use for usually for us is the exhaust temperature is a k-type thermocouple and if it's just one exhaust temp sensor it's going to be the Motec TCA which should be listed here Motec thermocouple amplifier and now of course that just uses the calibration in the background you'll note here the oil temperature sensor and there's no setup and if you remember if the oil temperature setter sensor isn't uh, doesn't have a resource allocated so you haven't allocated it to AV5 or AV6 or anything like that then um, then you don't see the setup so if you want to configure your oil temperature you need to go up to uh, tools edit input output resources just type in oil T there it is and maybe your wiring guys allocated that to AV7 go close now you see the setup is here and because it's a major setup parameter we have to do a major reset control s and ECU resets and we're away okay all right so that's that page ah inland manifold pressure estimate so a little bit to cover here so now we're across to initial setup engine details if you have a look here uh, and we have quite a comp or well not complex but a reasonably detailed way of mimicking inlet manifold pressure should the throttle position uh, so should the map sensor fail the there is a table that you can fill out to estimate what manifold pressure would have been if uh, you know given a certain engine speed and throttle position so there's two reasons we use this table and the easiest thing for me is to go to the live software and show you all right so over here to engine details and we have inlet manifold pressure estimate main so um, probably the first thing to look at is uh, in context of what we're doing here now which is setting up for a normal or a standard engine which uses a single throttle body and a plenum and in the, in that case we are using inlet manifold pressure for our mapping so in other words a map sensor is deciding the load on the engine and our fueling and ignition is based on our inlet manifold pressure sensor so in this case uh, we want to be able to um, have some sort of fallback if the map sensor wire falls off or the map sensor itself fails so rather than a single number that our previous generation ECUs used we have a an entire table called an inlet manifold pressure estimate main all right so this table can be configured to um, give you an estimated manifold pressure for any given throttle and engine speed now right now it's in a different mode I'm going what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to migrate uh, uh, the other table that you saw over on the presentation so I'm going to migrate that from another um, another configuration and to do that we use the migrate feature so to, and to do that we've got to add our compare package so I'm going to grab a package that's got a table in it to save me populating the whole thing in front of you and so there's a whole lot of um, let's find one here so we'll search GP right too many packages here so this is the this is going to be a package that's got the table I want inside 
and I'm going tools and migrate data I was actually going to have a webinar on this dedicated but uh, this will just show you this so I can just type in man press estimate and there's the table and I can click on here I can see if it's what I want by just clicking on data and yes there's the table I want and I just drag that over like that it's not that easy close all right file close compare package it's all a bit of a blur I'm sure all right now when I click over here here's the table so let me explain now that I, I can refer to it so I'm gonna press F6 to make this bigger for you so you if you really want to be uh, conscientious about this uh, setup in this vehicle you want to put a bit of effort into filling out this table with what is a realistic inlet manifold pressure at any of these given locations so for example if I'm at 5,000 revs at 100% uh, throttle then uh, this being a turbo turbocharged engine if my my boost aim is 1.5 bar or 1.4 bar for example at 5,000 then if I put a number of 250 kPa in here that means if the normal boost is there even if the map sensor is blown off the engine the wire is melted and it's referring or it goes into default when it goes into default in this mode here automatic mode so auto inlet manifold pressure mode automatic means the inlet manifold pressure channel is equal to the inlet manifold pressure sensor if the in inlet manifold pressure sensor diagnostic is okay so in other words if we're all happy with the sensor and the wiring then just use the inlet manifold pressure sensor for the inlet manifold pressure channel otherwise if it's not okay then use the inlet manifold pressure estimate all right and this is the inlet manifold this table defines what the inlet manifold pressure estimate uh, or sorry this this table is the inlet manifold pressure estimate table so um, you can see that you can do a whole lot better than a single number here uh, and if you follow the whatever your normal boost would be at 80 for example at 80 percent throttle at four and a half thousand revs if your normal boost is one bar of boost that would be 200 kPa then in order to be safe you would probably make this number a little higher and so what if the uh, engines a little richer than normal um, it's got no map sensor so at least the engines running and you can get it to run quite good now a nice little feature of this table here is see this Q what this Q means is actually hovering on it tells you uh, quick adjust function so you can actually as you drive around in your engine on site here we can press Q and it will update what the inlet manifold pressure sensor is so I'm actually online now so if I bring the RPM up here all right so I'm currently at 15% uh, throttle all right I, I don't even know let me just flick over I'll press F5 and see what the map sensor so the map sensor is saying it's at 97 kPa let me just adjust this down to be something maybe a little more realistic so there's our map sensor we're driving around at 75 kPa and we go back to our initial setup click here press spacebar here we are on this site so at 15% throttle I can just press Q and it reads the inlet manifold pressure sensor indirect and populates the table so you can go around there get a few points and you can fill out a really nice uh, fallback manifold pressure uh, solution for uh, if your map sensor dies so if you're uh, competing in a you know, long distance off-road competition like Dakar or anything like that where you've got to have the ultimate reliability this is a really nice feature that allows you to do that all right easy enough hope so now there is another time that we use this table and it's not common but if you have an engine that you want to map based on throttle position then we use this table to define manifold pressure in a particular way now if I take you back up to our tuning workbooks 
because we're not, we'll cover this again in another webinar but just quickly going to show you the vertical axis on our efficiency map and our ignition map is manifold pressure now that that inlet manifold pressure channel itself is normally derived from the inlet manifold pressure sensor but if the inlet manifold pressure sensor is not reliable in other words if it's a multi throttle body engine or an engine with a very very large camshaft naturally aspirated and you don't get reliable inlet manifold pressure readings because of camshaft overlap we can actually switch this channel itself to, to read from throttle position so in other words we reconfigure this from zero to uh, um, if you want to use it as a naturally aspirated engine from 0 to 100 which is what it's going to be it has to be that if it's uh, if you're not going to use manifold pressure so you can f configure this from 0 to 100 and we switch the mode here so our inlet manifold pressure mode goes from automatic straight to estimate so basically in, in this mode here estimate basically says inlet manifold pressure is derived from this table all the time not not as a fallback but the whole time now in that case we just really want to use this table to make our throttle position numbers be the same as our map sensor numbers for use on those two tables I know this is a little confusing however so the easiest way to do that is simply to put in what's called a one-to-one -one calibration so we don't even need the engine speed we turn that off and we don't even need any of that we can delete all of that and we just need two points 0 and 100 all right so at zero throttle 0 kPa 100% throttle 100 kPa so whenever our throttle is zero we we are showing zero kPa whenever our throttle is 100 we are showing 100 kPa so when we come on to our two tuning tables this basically will become throttle position so 100% throttle will be 100 here 60% throttle will be 60 here all right and the same here all right so that's that's what we use to switch the package into a throttle based tune mode now as I say most of the time say 80 to 90 percent of the time at least you're going to be using a normal map sensor normal plenum single throttle body and you will just be using inlet manifold pressure sensor itself as the uh, sensor that determines what goes on in these tables all right that was a bit of a mouthful uh, anyway let's see how far we go okay so moving on uh, basically these slides are just covering off what we went through all right lambda setup um, so the if you've used our M1 GPA you'll see that this is a lot uh, less complicated the setup page basically uh, the um, the can addresses and the can bus because we're using only an M130 for GP light there's only one can bus so we don't need to choose a can bus so there's no CAN bus to choose and there's no addressing to choose uh, so because the LTC's come out from MoTeC if it's a dual LTC it comes out with a, a 460 as the CAN address for uh, the first LTC and the second if it's a dual the second address is 461 that's all pre-configured in the software ready to go and realistically all you have to do is turn on the uh, the lambda setup here so just enable it and then all you need to do from that point is turn on whether it's an LTC or an LTC in and the difference between those two is an LTC is, uses Bosch lambda sensors and LTC in uses the NTK uh, pros and cons the Bosch lambda sensor is cheaper but not as reliable if you're running in you know challenge with challenging fuels or in, in um, wet conditions like in marine jet ski boats that kind of thing an NTK sensor is slightly more expensive than a Bosch sensor but it runs it it's more robust to um, contaminants in the exhaust um, the other thing about an NTK sensor is that uh, or an NTK 
uh, an LTC in our, our controller for an NTK sensor that can be calibrated to read extra rich mixtures and that would be for use with uh, turbocharged methanol would be the only time you'd need that so if you have a turbo methanol engine running more than a bar of boost you chances are you're going to want, want to run richer than lambda 0.65 and we have a calibration method to extend the NTK calibration down to around 0.54. The Bosch version of our LTC doesn't allow that. All right, so pretty simple setup. We'll just, uh, the diagnostics tell you what's going on down the bottom. We'll just flip back over to the software. So we're going down to initial setup and Lambda and the help, we've left this in tree mode here so you can see the help uh, which appears here. So uh, if ever you're looking for help, sometimes it's not on the parameter itself, sometimes it, it's at the top of uh, all the group help. And you can see here there's a lot of help which basically tells you pretty much what I just went over, uh, tells you about the CAN buses and so forth. Uh, so we expand this out, um, we can enable if we've got uh, one or two lambda sensors and whether they are LTCs or LTCNs. We may not even have the enable now. LTC messages, basically this is uh, turns on the CAN messaging to allow the LTC, which is a separate product, lambda to CAN device and this allows us to control the heaters on that device from the M1 and so there's help on each of these parameters which basically one of them is allows for a delay before the start and one of them allows for it to keep running before you start so you can turn the key on and it will run the sensor will run so that the sensor is up and running before you start the engine so that you can analyze your cold start all right All right, engine speed limit. So there's a little bit of detail here. Um, it's a, quite a lot more definable than our gold box series. We have a the engine speed limit itself, which is definable. All right, so now we've got a little chart here for you to follow. You see the engine speed limit here, and our example is 7,500. Everything that we control in our GP packages and our GP light package all things uh, to do with soft cuts and so forth and fuel and ignition cuts are all controlled above the engine speed limit not below it some some versions of software there is some control below it but basically we get no engine speed limiting at all until we reach our engine speed limit main which is in this example 7500 you then are able to define two um, or two ranges and the range is the amount of N RPM that the engine must go through before we get to a hundred percent cut. So if we just start uh, at the beginning to talk about uh, the ignition. So the ignition cut uh, at, at, the ed, at the range limit, so if we have an ignition range of 600 what that means is in this case at 8100 rpm we have 100 percent ignition cut all right and if we are halfway so at 7800 we have 50 percent cut so the more the engine speed rises above the more percentage of cut is applied all right so nice and simple so effectively what you use this range number for is to make the engines the engine cut uh, more and less aggressive if you made this number one as in one rpm as soon as it goes over 7500 it's going to be doing full cut which is much more aggressive than uh, if you made this 1000 all right so that's your first thing you can play with that to whatever limit you like the next thing is you have is the fuel margin so what that means is this is the rpm before the fuel the rpm above the limit before fuel cut starts so in this case our fuel cut would not start until 7500 plus 1000 is 8500 so at 8500 we get our first lot of fuel cut 
and then we've got that same range parameter here where over 600 rpm more we phase in the the cut so at uh, let's see 8500 plus another 600 so at 9100 if we were to ever get that high we would be at 100% fuel cut and at 100% ignition cut so there's only one way in a normal terms you'd get that high and that's a downshift alright so um, that's the the normal model for our engine speed limit in all our GP packages so there's nothing new there just uh, explain that out for you there is one new retard function that's uh, turned up in GP light and this allows for an amount of retard to be active when the uh, amount of retard to be applied when the engine speed limit is active in any way all right, so this has, uh, it's not on the screen, but it has an enable function. So uh, if you t enable it, it is on this engine speed limit. My apologies. It is on there. So we have an enable function on here. Uh, I'll switch to the software and show you in a minute. So when this is on, basically if your engine speed limit is active, you can apply retard. Uh, one thing we can advise you though, if you go using this quite a lot, you're going to be uh, heating things up, exhaust valves are going to suffer, so we uh, err caution. We prefer you use caution when using this. Alright, I'll flip over to the software to show you where we're at here. Okay, so we've got our engine speed limits and a sep so here's our engine speed limit main here. My apologies, that's the coolant temperature engine speed limit. I'm going to press F6 here. Alright, so F6 full screen. So this is an engine speed limit that can apply to our coolant temperature. So as the coolant temperature goes up, obviously we can start to drop the engine speed limit. Alright, here's our engine speed limit maximum. So this is the one that's used. So the ECU looks at all the engine speed limit possibilities and uses the lowest one, whatever is the lowest engine speed limit in any table the ECU uses. Alright, there's our uh, our range All right, for the ignition, brief explanation about it there, our margin, so this in this case our fuel, our fuel cut is going to happen very quickly after our ignition cut. Our ignition range is really quite tight here so this is going to be quite an aggressive rev limit and our fuel range is really tight as well. All right, there are our main parameters for setting up how the engine speed limit behaves. There's actually an alternate uh, mode here that's designed to make the engine speed limit sound different, sound a little bit more like the M800, the way the M800 did, and so you can use that if you're after a particular sound on your engine speed limit. But if you want a nice smooth engine speed limit, I'd suggest you use the default. The other thing in this screen is our coolant temperature engine speed limit. So Again, wherever we don't want this table to do anything, we make the number higher than the normal engine speed limit here. So this table is a dedicated table, and so at no matter what, at 101 degrees, uh, so as soon as it pops over 100 degrees Celsius, in this case we're going to drop down to 5000 uh, RPM as our engine speed limit. So you configure this however you want. Right, while I'm on that subject, uh, and it's coming up in our presentation, oh sorry, I'll go back to our engine speed limit retard. So over here is our retard section. So if we want to enable this, and we can put in minus 20 here, what that means, as soon as we have any act, as soon as the engine speed limit becomes active in any way, our ignition timing is uh, set to what this parameter is here of minus 20. Now also on this page we have our uh, physical warning set up for things like a warning light or the warning source to turn up while you're tuning. Um, let me just get this going again. Uh, so the we have a warning engine speed limit. So if, uh, there's only actually two warnings that trigger this engine speed limit so that you can remember what they are. If you click on here you'll see the help which says this engine speed limit is used for coolant temperature and oil pressure warnings. All other warnings do not request an engine speed limit. So uh, this engine speed limit here is activated if the coolant temperature maximum or the oil pressure minimum are reached. 
All right, and in the case of the oil pressure minimum, you can see we've got an engine speed um, parameter on here. The other thing that you can configure is the engine warning engine speed limit delay, which actually isn't on this worksheet. I'll quickly add it now. Unlock. Right click, unlock. Engine speed um, delay. Engine speed. Um, Warning delay enable. Okay. All right. So this is the warning. Basically, this warning. If any of these warnings here, first of all, are enabled, second of all, are exceeded, they must be exceeded for this delay time. And then, if it's oil pressure or coolant temperature, then this engine speed limit is activated. All right, so in the case of the oil pressure, of course, it's a minimum. So if we want to actually have have a look at setting this up, uh, I can bring oil pressure down here. So I can go C for channels, engine oil pressure, there it is. Just drag it down and drop it like that. And we can see from my simulator, our oil pressure is currently 70 pound. So in this uh, application here, we've at 2,000 revs, we've got our minimum oil pressure is supposed to be 50 kPa. Let's make this kPa. Right click, engine oil pressure, channel properties. Just to show you how to deal with it, kPa. So we've got 482 kPa now. So our engine speed currently is 2,400. You can see that on the highlighted part. So if the engine oil pressure drops below 50 kPa, we're going to have a warning and we're going to have our engine speed limit enable after one second. But we first of all, we have to turn this warning on. So where is it? In warning engine, warning mode, engine oil pressure warning. So that is enabled. So now with that enabled and that setting there, if I now lift that setting up, let's lift it all up to something higher than what we have at the moment. I can see if my simulator's configured to oil pressure here, just one moment. I'm not sure if that's running off one of my simulator pots. Doesn't look like it. All right, so the easiest way for me to do this is simply lift these numbers above the current oil pressure. So if I make it 500, all right, warning goes off straight away and we have an in, so I'll just press pause here, T. So we see our engine speed limit state is engine oil pressure warning. Our warning source is engine oil pressure warning. It could be, could be another warning, but um, this, you can have lots of warnings that come up in the warning source. But the engine speed limit state at the moment is being controlled by the engine oil pressure warning. All right, and it's come down to the engine speed limit has come down to 3,256, which is that number there. All right. Okay, so that's that. Now, if it's not oil pressure or coolant temperature, then if any of these other warnings are exceeded, if they're enabled and exceeded, then the warning source um, status will go on. And if there's a light, you can have that uh, turn that light on. All right, let's see what we got to on our presentation. There's a bit with uh, engine speed limits. All right, so we've just covered that off. And that is the end. All right, well, thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next webinar.